Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and an overview and sharing some benchmarks from this video card. This is the HIS Radeon HD 7850. It's the IceQ Turbo Edition, which means it's got a custom cooler and it's manufacturer overclocked. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box and the uh, main feature of this is obviously the IceQ cooler which HIS has added with the black hole impeller fan that's uh, designed to keep the card cooler and quieter and because of that they're able to overclock it from the factory. Uh, the turbo mode means that this GPU is running at 1000 megahertz core clock that's as opposed to the reference core clock which is 860 megahertz. Uh, you also get some other features from HIS, such as the iTurbo software utility, which you can use to uh, overclock and monitor the card. Uh, you also get premium online customer support. This is an AMD video card, of course, featuring the Radeon HD 7850 GPU, which is a 28 nanometer GCN architecture GPU. features 32 ROPs, 1024 unified shaders, and uh, it's generally speaking, a very good mid-range card. PCI Express Gen 3 is supported. Still backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2, so don't worry if you still do not have a motherboard that, that supports PCI Express Gen 3, motherboard or I should say processor, because generally that's more dependent on the processor that you're using. Uh, it is backwards compatible with Gen 2, and it's really just an increased bandwidth you get, and you're not going to saturate either bus with this video card, so it's not going to be uh, performance degradation. You get a 2 gigabyte frame frame buffer of GDDR5 memory. It's on a 256 bit bus and that runs along at 1200 megahertz which gives you a total memory bandwidth of 153.6 gigabytes per second. Uh, you also get support for 4K and 2K HD resolutions and you have HDMI out as well as some mini display ports. I'll show you guys all the uh, inputs and outputs on the card. There's some more information here on the back of the box. Some of it is stuff I've already mentioned so I'm not going to go and repeat it but you do get a little image here of the black hole impeller which I'm going to show you guys once I take the video card out. But let's take a look inside the box. Inside the retail box we have another box. We have some foam padding and protecting protection. We have uh, some information telling you to take precautions if you're going to be shipping this video card, particularly if you're shipping it inside a computer, because uh, video cards tend to be heavy, and if they get knocked around during shipping, uh, that it's not good, so make sure you secure it. I'm going to set this aside for now, and we'll come back to that in just a moment, and we'll take a look at the included accessories and documentation. So first off, you have this little pouch, which I will open and try, try my best not to rip. Okay, so first off, of course, you have your driver and installation disk. Chances are there's updated drivers available directly from the AMD website. Uh, also, if you're going to be using the HIS software for overclocking, HIS probably also has an updated version of that available, so it's usually better to download from the Internet rather than using this disk. Uh, you also get a HIS graphics card installation guide, which uh, I'm not going to fold out for you, but it is black and white, and it will sort of guide you through basic installation stuff how to install it. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer video on Newegg TV. You get a little HIS power-up case sticker if you want to put stickers on your case. That's about it for that little pouch. Here, oh, actually you get a separate disc with the iTurbo utility, so uh, you can check this out. This has version 1.1.3, so you can load this if that's the latest version. I haven't checked the HIS website, but if there's a newer version, that's probably better to go with the newer one. You also get a DVI to VGA adapter, so if you have an older monitor you need to connect via a VGA connection, you can use this on one of the DVI outputs on the card. You get a crossfire bridge, as this video card does support two-way crossfire. And uh, you, you get the bridge right here, and you can use that to connect two of the cards to increase your performance with Crossfire X. There we go. It's a flexible crossfire bridge, so this can go up to triple slot spacing. And that does it for accessories. Moving on to the 7850 IceQ Turbo video card itself, we're going to start off with a measurement. Measuring from the bracket down here, uh, it's sort of difficult to tell exactly how long it is. It's between 11 and a quarter and 11 and a half inches. So give yourself 11 and a half inches total just to make sure that you have enough room for this video card in your case. And this has a fairly unique design as far as video cards go for the cooler itself. This is a two slot card when it comes to the PCI Express bracket but you will notice that the black hole impeller does protrude a bit more beyond that. So in particular, if you are intending on purchasing two of these to run in a Crossfire X two-way configuration, you will want to make sure that your motherboard has triple slot spacing. That will give you enough space to put two of these right next to each other. That being said, uh, the reason that this uh, pr particular part of the, uh, heat, of, of the heat sink and fan protrudes so much is because of this black hole impeller design. And you may notice 
that you actually have a fair amount of space in between the PCB, the power connectors right there, and the card. So uh, it's, it, it goes through, as you can see, right there. Uh, so the black hole impeller can actually pull air from this side or from this side, and that uh, allows you to get more air towards that. It's going to create positive pressure in this end of the cooler. It's going to push it this way across a set of aluminum fins, which you can maybe see. It's difficult. All right, there's the aluminum fins. You can see them right under there. And those are uh, situated this way, so the air is going to push along the card and eject primarily out the back of the chassis, where you have a nice big uh, gap right there. So uh, uh, in enhancing the, uh, the cooling efficiency, you also have these heat pipes. So the heat pipes are going down right there and making uh, they're terminating directly above the GPU. You have two fatter 8 millimeter heat pipes as well as a couple 6 millimeter heat millimeter heat pipes. Those are, those are just going to be transferring heat from the GPU out into the aluminum fin stack and then of course the air pushed by the black hole impeller uh, effectively cools those off and keeps the components uh, well within temperature for a general operating environment. Um, now one thing I should say is that since I've been benchmarking this card already I can confirm that this card stays very cool. In fact the maximum temperature that I saw in all of my tests was 54 degrees Celsius. That's very cool. Uh, in particular, I will be comparing this to the 7870 uh, version, the reference version of this card and the benchmarks coming up. And you'll notice that that card was typically running more in the 70 to 80 degrees Celsius range. And um, since this is a 1000 megahertz uh, uh, core clock GPU, they're effectively, effectively running at the same speed. So uh, I can confirm that uh, the black hole impeller uh, cooler here both on this card as well as the uh, 7870 version and the 7950 that I have seen from HIS. Very, very effective coolers. Again, just bear in mind that you will need a little bit of extra space within your case. And um, apart from that, you're going to have a very cool running uh, graphics card. Also, it doesn't make much noise at all, so it stays nice and quiet. Let's move on to the uh, video outputs down here at this end. So you have two mini display port connectors, HDMI as well as a dual link DVI. The mini display ports are 1.2, so they can do 4K resolutions. Uh, you can get up to 2560 by 1600 uh, from the dual link DVI, and you can do 1920 by 1200 from the HDMI. Uh, bear in mind, these are mini display ports down here at this end, so uh, you would want one of these little guys, a little uh, mini display port, just standard display port adapter, if you were going to be plugging in via standard display port. Those are sold separately, so you might want to pick up one or two of those if you want to be running particularly multiple monitors or if you just have a display port monitor. And you can push up to four monitors uh, using Affinity uh, from this card if you want to connect up to all four of those video outputs. Here on the back of the card we can see the PCB itself. Uh, up here you have your Crossfire X bridge and again two-way Crossfire X supported, no more. Uh, and then uh, also here you can see four spring-loaded spring -loaded screws which uh, keep the uh, cooler in place, uh, which again is very nice because just four screws to remove, you don't have to take eight or twelve or more or less uh, off of the back of the card if you do want to remove the cooler to clean it or that sort of thing. Of course down here you have your uh, PCI Express connector. Physically it's the same for PCI Express uh, 1 and 2 and 3. PCI Express Gen 3 compatible of course. And then here at the center on the other side of the PCB you would have the GPU itself, the Pitcairn Pro 7850. Of course, I cannot forget the power requirement. So here you have two six-pin PCI Express power connectors. Uh, you do want to have a minimum 500 watt power supply for the uh, GPU as well as your entire computer. So bear that in mind and of course make sure you have the proper connectors so you can plug in the power to this device because it won't work without that. You also have a bit of reinforced uh, sort of black brushed aluminum uh, bar right here and that's just going to help to keep the PCB nice and straight. And then finally, in uh, most case configurations with the card plugged in, the uh, side of the card that you'll be getting a good look at is that side, so you will be able to see uh, your heat pipes as well as that HIS logo. Next up, we're going to take a look at my benchmarks, and for comparison, I will be testing this card against its bigger brother. This is the Radeon HD 7870. This is the reference model, uh, and when I tested this card, I was using 12.8 drivers, uh, the AMD Catalyst drivers. So bear in mind, I'm using 12.11 beta drivers for testing this one, and those do give a pretty significant performance boost. Both GPUs, since this one is overclocked, are running at 1000 megahertz. Uh, you get a few more shader units and that sort of thing with the 7870. But I would like to point out that the 7850 here was running neck and neck and actually beat the 7870 in several of my tests. So that was definitely very nice and, to boot, stayed much, much cooler. 
So let's take a look at my test bed. We're running on an Asus Maximus 5 Gene motherboard. That's a Z77 chipset, 3570K processor. So we are running at PCI on PCI Express Gen 3. And then we also have our Trident X memory, which is running at 2666. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the HIS Radeon HD 7850 Ice QX Turbo Edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.